for, for those who perhaps are not familiar with the Hearing Voices Network, um, is there a way you can give a brief um, history of, of what that what that approach is is about? I mean, who are the main figures of that approach? Maybe we can. Yeah. Start there, yeah. Oh, this is my favourite topic to oh, talk yeah, about. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll have a chisel and, and I'll yeah, shut you up. You have a chisel. <laughs> um, so over thirty years ago now, um, uh, uh, Professor Marius Rom. Mm-hmm. Um, who was a social psychiatrist. So social psychiatrists look at things a little bit different to, to normal psychiatrists. So they take, okay. take into consideration more what's going on for a person in their life. And there is social psychiatrists here in Australia, but over there in the Netherlands, right. they were quite popular yeah. at that time. It sounds like they're a rare breed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But um, he was working with a voice hero, Patsy, Patsy Haig, and, and Patsy said, why don't you believe that my voices are real? Yeah. You know, you go to a church and, and you know, um, you go to church and believe in a God that you can't see, but you can't believe that my voices are real, uh, are real you know, to me. Yeah, we, 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 we talk about that just before we, we started the podcast about religious experiences and, and voice hearing, right? Historically, people have been hearing voices since time began. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I did my <clears throat> Google research before I started the podcast, and, you know, I have a whole range of people here from the Hearing Voices kind of network. We have, I, I, well, the, the ex-guitarist, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I have da- Danny McNamara, um, Anthony Hopkins, you know, Sigmund Freud, Gandhi, St. John of Arc, William Blake, Vinnie Jones, Socrates. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Mm. And yet it's such a stigmatised area. Yeah, and I guess people don't really think about it all that much until they're it, you know, they have the experience yep. or they're working in the field or a family member, friend, loved one has it. Um, it's just not something that we're, you know, we grow up learning about other than through the media or movies, you know, Definitely. which give it a really bad name. But in actual fact, if you dig a little bit deeper, people have been hearing voices forever. Yep. And, um, and I guess different meanings for those experiences have been you know, going around, you know, there's lots of different reasons. And um, I'm when sorry, pa- I, I, I did interrupt you just now. Yeah, no, no, before, when, Patsy, so, yeah. when Patsy challenged Marius, as a psychiatrist, he was trained that voices were meaningless symptoms okay. of a serious mental illness. Mm-hmm. That's how, even today, how psychiatrists... Uh, Look at it. Att- and they mm-hmm. were auditory hallucinations. Sure. So therefore, you don't give them much attention. You know, um, it's it's a meaningless symptom. It's nothing, you know. Um, and so when Patsy challenged him, he really took that on and he and Patsy went on a TV show um, similar to Oprah Winfrey yep. um, over there in the Netherlands and they started talking about um, voice hearing, both of them, and they encouraged people to call in. And um, uh, Marius's... Uh, partner at that time, um, Dr. Sandra Escher, she um, put together a kind of little survey. This was the first research Mm -hmm. that was done. They spoke to all of the callers and what they found was in actual fact of the 750 people that called in, um, four of them, uh, 400 of them had uh, heard voices and were in psychiatry. But 350 were out there in the community hearing voices and have never been in psychiatry. Just living their life. Living their life. So, yeah. so what do you think that said to Marius? That it's something that's common and that people can learn to live with it. And it's, mu- it's more than a meaningless symptom. Yeah. Um, and so there was more to, to, to learn about this experience. Right. And he believed that that learning could come from the people that have this experience. And so over these 30 odd years, um, that's what the movement's been doing. They've been doing research, they've been speaking and engaging with people of lived experience or anybody that has an interest in this. Mm -hmm. They've been having annual congresses around the world um, to to explore and talk about it and learn more, um, especially from people of lived experience. Mm 
And so um, I think that's one of the things that people often don't get asked. Why do you think you're hearing voices? Right. And, um, you know, I don't recall anybody ever asking me that question. And, um, you know, if you've, if you've been given a picture that you have a serious mental illness, that's because I've got a mental illness. But in actual fact, there could be lots of reasons. So um, it could be like a muse. So I'm mm. a musician. I write songs, sing, play guitar. And often I will hear um, the, the music or even the lyrics before I write it. I see, yeah. And I will hear that the same way as I'm sure, you know, other musicians or authors, you know, that write books. They can, the characters can come alive. They can hear them. I've heard authors say that they, you know, it's dictated to them. Uh, as they write. Would normalisation then be the main theme of the voices, the, the, the Hearing Voices Network? Normalising it and, and giving... Normalisation, accept, acceptance, acceptance and normalisation. So yeah. we're not pathologising. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're exploring, we're interested in what the voices mean to the person yeah. and how they um, affect their lives. Medication. Mm. Uh, you, yeah, you've talked about medication. Um, what are your thoughts about medication in terms of, of one of a better term, treating voice hearing? Yeah. And if someone does stop medication, what's, what's that experience like? Have you stopped taking medication? Is it an okay thing to do in your, in your view? Yeah. So first of all, Joe, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Very much so. Yep. I just want to I want to yep. put that disclaimer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm talking purely from a, a, a lived experience perspective, yep. and um, I guess for me, um, I believe that medication, little bits of medication, um, for short periods of time can help with the distress mm -hmm. that comes from hearing distressing voices. It's got nothing to do with the, the voices. voices, it's the distress. The distress that comes with that, yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, what we do wrong here is that um, the little bit for a little while. Right, yeah, yeah. It, that's the key, um, but we don't do that. It's, it's a little bit, then we slowly increase it, um, and you're on it for life. I see. Um, and, and, and it becomes the hook or the, it becomes what everybody relies on. The voice hearers, I know lots of voice hearers that are, um, you know, take their meds and there's also a lot of voice hearers that um, don't believe they help or, you know, don't find them helpful at all and don't want to take them. Mm. Um, and so for me... It was very much, I was over-medicated. And so my quality of life, I, it, was just, it was just hard to function. I was so medicated. Um, I was putting on more and more weight, which mm -hmm. was a side effect. But then I started to do a little bit of my own research and realised that these medications, especially the antipsychotics, can actually shorten our lifespan. There's plenty of research out yep. there, you know, by 25 years. I was actually getting sicker um, the longer that I was on this medication. And I, I, I come to believe that this was um, not something I wanted. Sure. And so we don't have enough help or support for people who don't want to take medication. Yeah, good point. And, and it's very, very hard to get off it. Mm. And there's no help out there. Um, in actual fact, you know, I remember saying, well, I want to get off it and, you know, being told, well, that's what every psych patient says. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. um, it's just part of the game. But, yeah, but you know, you've got no choice. It sounds like a life sentence. It, yeah, 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 pretty mm, much. Yeah. And, um, and then family and friends and everybody like that, do you really want to do that? Like, that's not safe and, you know, that we've got your best interest at heart. But, you know, that was my, that was my choice. That was what I wanted to do. Sure. 
And uh, what I learnt, you know, first of all, I threw them flushing down the toilet like everybody yep. does, you know, and then felt good for a few weeks and then all of a sudden, you know, got worse, um, which I think, you know, was probably rebound, you know. It, it was it was a, a, a pretty um, bad experience. So I, I just thought to myself that, I, you know, there's got to be another way. There's got to be a way to sort of come off it slowly but to find a doctor that would allow me or yeah. work with me to do that was with, willing my, to do with that. my psychiatric yeah. history, nobody was willing to do that, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I guess it was for me finding uh, I needed to get out of the mental health system in order mm. to come off medication. Sure. So I... Uh, end up finding a good GP, yep. working with the GP to try to take down and come off all of my medication and was able to, to actually achieve that. Mm, well done. Yeah, and just my life just improved and got better and better. I was able to go back to study, uh, go back to school, go back to work um, and have been doing so for quite a long period of time now, like yeah. over 10 years. Your face just kind of lights up when you say that, and the real sense of freedom there. Oh, absolutely. Mm. To be out of the system, something I never thought would happen, mm -hmm. um, and to be off all medication was, um, it was a long process, sure. but it was well worth it. Mm. And uh, got my life back, really. And the whole time I was working on my voices. So what I learnt within the hearing voices approach was that it's not about getting rid of them, it's about changing the relationship we have with them. I mean, I, I get what you say, like, you know, this, you know, you're not a medical practitioner for that matter of fact, neither am I, um, but that the choice to, to stay on or get off medication is a very individual one. Absolutely. Right? And that there is a life with medication and there's a life without m medication. And yeah, I, it's a, again, like it's a very contentious issue, but I, I mentioned this in, a, in, a, in a, I think the previous episode um, when I was speaking with another Amanda, by the way, Amanda McGregor, um, she spoke about depression and anxiety, but you know, there's this uh, a, a view out there that I really kind of like ascribe to that medication can be very useful um, but for, mo for, for some cases, medication's a crutch. You know, it's like when you break your leg, right? You, you know, in, in order to kind of get around, you need a crutch. But there's a time when you might not need that crutch and you have to have that bravery and courage to, to kind of like let go and learn a new way of, of moving. Yeah. And you need support of people around you who are willing to help you through that journey as well. Absolutely. It's not an easy journey. Mm. But it can very quickly escalate that crutch, yeah. you know. Um, and, and I think I'm not anti-medication, I'm just anti-bad use of it because sure. I think it has its purpose. Mm -hmm. And I um, certainly have learned through my coming off process that I had to change my attitude towards it too. So I was very much anti um, medication, yep. um, but that didn't work because when I did, you know, hit the skids or whatever and hadn't slept for three or four nights, then um, I knew I needed something. Yeah, sure. It was a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, mm. what I learned was a little bit for a little while, you know, a few days, it broke the pattern and I was fine again. Mm. Um, but yeah, very much. I think it's it's an attitude, it's a process, and it, it it's possible. And I know other people who who've successfully come off, but sure. it's it's yeah. We need to be doing more to support people to do that. And and we know that not everybody who has a diagnosis of schizophrenia hears voices. It's it's, it's an experience um, that uh, you know people with eating disorders bipolar, you know, what other kind of diagnoses can have this experience, even depression, yeah. it's common. Um, but we also know that it's common to hear voices, um, you know, when you're grieving. Yes. And, you know, uh, uh, that's, that's a normal part of grieving and it's mm -hmm. not sort of seen as um, problematic if, if, you know, if a, if a woman's hearing the voice of her 
her husband that's passed on, you know. Um, it, and in actual fact, that's probably bringing her great comfort. I, I totally agree with you. And, and I disagree with a lot of the of the knee-jerk reaction that comes with hearing voices. And I have to admit, in the past, when I was a lot more inexperienced, that would have been my my uh, my reaction, right? Someone's hearing voices, oh shit, we've got to do something about that. Whereas now, having many years behind me in clinical practice, I'm more concerned if someone came into the office and talked about their trauma, and their abuse, and how that's affecting their life, they can't sleep in depression, than if someone just came in here, oh yeah, I, you know, I'm, and Millie had a chat with me today and she said that I, um, I need to lose a little bit of weight. You know, um, my, my focus would probably be on the person who has um, that depression, anxiety and have, you know, have those issues as opposed to someone who's talked about hearing voices. I think it might be because it is an experience that is so different from what other people who don't hear voices have. You know, it is a knee-jerk reaction. Mm. No. And we, f we fear what we don't know. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's also um, people who hear voices can also have like, um, I guess, that intrusive thoughts or distressing thoughts, um, uh, what some people call paranoia. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, those... They're you know they they're just as difficult to live to to live with, but the hearing voices approach um, can work yeah. for those as well. And I think it's like the point for me was one learning that there was another way, and if I wanted to mm. to learn a way to gain mastery over my experience and to be able to. Uh, change the relationship I had with voices, visions and other experiences, then, um, yeah, I mean, that that was just I incredible to think that... Um, and, and I wouldn't have had that opportunity if it wasn't for the work within the movement to actually do that and challenge that um, predominant kind of message that's out there, that it's a symptom of a, a you know, a mental illness. I mean... You know, it's it's beliefs. Uh, um, you know, some people have some uh, beliefs that other people don't believe in, like you know the paranormal, the UFOs, telepathy, mm. um, and and you know whether you, you believe that or not. If a if a person believes that, yeah, um, and that's what their experience is, then who are we to to say no? That's not true. Yeah. It may not be my reality. But it is your reality, and I think that's where respect comes from. Um, or with, with that, I think respect is the key um, to, to, to that interaction. Speaking of movement and speaking of there's another way, is the hearing voice, does, does a hearing voices network have a representation in Western Australia? Are there groups that people can attend? Are there, are there like-minded uh, mental health practitioners who people can actually, you know, Approach. Absolutely, yeah. So um, the movement's been around here in uh, Western Australia since I think it was two thousand and eight. Okay. Yeah, in in Western Australia, uh, we had one of those congresses that I was yep. telling you about, and um, it was uh, because of uh, uh, um, a guy by the name of uh, Joe Kalea, mm -hmm. who was the CEO of Richmond. Uh, fellowship fellowship yeah, yeah. back then, well, Richmond Wellbeing now. Joe's a great name. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, it is a good name. And jo <laughs> Joe's a, a, an awesome... And so he was a CEO and, and, sure. and um, yeah, so he was very passionate about the movement and, um, uh, you know, got, got funding mm -hmm. um, for the Australian Hearing Voices Network to set up and be based here in WA through... Um, uh, Richmond, mm -hmm. and and that money came from lotteries. West, oh, yep. yep. They fund a lot of good initiatives. In yeah, the and so the the um, what happened was the um, there was a a lot of people from other parts of Australia came over here to WA for the congress, and a lot of international people from the movement oh, came. Okay. And um, that's kind of how it, it, it spread out across Australia. So there's a um, Voices Vic in Victoria 
and um, there's also uh, a group in New South Wales that those people came and they went back and they started it. And so I was very fortunate to be employed as the coordinator there at Richmond, of coordinator of the mm-hmm. WA Hearing Voices Network. Nice. That network is still there and Jackie Day is now the coordinator there. And um, they've got a great team there that run hearing voices groups mm-hmm. and, and do some education and, and support. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a place here that... And they've got groups all around the suburbs... Um, hearing brilliant. voices groups, and they're a good, just a good port of call to to go yeah. for anything hearing voices here in Western Australia. I'll, I'll put some of the contact information in the show notes, um, and even probably flash it on the screen, maybe after the the interview. But yeah, I think it'd be nice to to be able to spread the message out there that there's a, there's a different way to yeah. approach this, you know, as opposed to one that's um, fueled by by fear and uncertainty that can be one that is fueled by understanding and compassion yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And there's a great book, 50 Stories of um, Recovery from Voice Hearers. I did see that on the Facebook page, yeah. Yeah, and um, that's got 50 stories and most people in there, so they say it depends on what research you're looking at, but they do say 70 Maybe eighty percent of people who have these experiences, it's mm. related to their trauma, yeah. and it's unhealed trauma yeah. that you know just sits there and it comes comes up again if if you're not given the right kind of support. And and I see this part as an important part of the healing process because it, we even use the term "let's give voice to our trauma," and this is very literally giving voice to the trauma and what you don't want to do. You know, I can I can see is repress those voices, understand them, and, you know, and listen to what it has to say. Amanda, you, you do some work around um, hearing voices and educating the public and mental health professionals. Can you give us a little bit of a rundown as to what you do? Yeah, so I, I feel very privileged to have had the opportunities that came with that role mm-hmm. at, um, as the coordinator of the Hearing Voices Network. I um, got to train with... Um, Professor Marius Rom and Dr right. Sandra Escher and a lot of the legends like Rufus May and Pete Bullimore, um, who, who um, Jackie Dillon, uh, Eleanor Longdon, who've come out to Australia and, um, yeah, so very fortunate to have that experience. And I guess it's always inspiring when, you know, you see an international speaker come out and talk about a new way. If people want to work on their voices um, and they want to work with me, I can do that um, privately okay. with them. Um, but also probably what I've been spending a lot of my time in is actually training um, voice hearers, uh, family members, other professionals in the hearing vo- in the tools within the hearing voices approach so that they can um, also do the work or, or do what's required. Mm. So um, I've been travelling around Australia for the last uh, quite a few years, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, just passing that learning on um, and trying to keep the, mo- the Australian Hearing Voices movement alive. My work um, uh, is uh, through my own consultancy mm-hmm. um, and uh, training business, so it's, it's private, but it's... Um, yeah, big part of what I what I do and what I'm passionate about. I also work, um, I guess, um, on other alternatives, okay. um, alternative ways to help support people who are experiencing distress, be it from voices, visions, other experiences. Yep. I'm um, currently the chairperson of ISPS, which mm-hmm. is ready for it. Okay, the International Go. Society of psychological and social approaches to psychosis. I'm going to need to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can yep. let people know about For it. Sure. I'll put so it in the we're show a member well. base, a national member base, yep. um, but we're, it's an international movement. And that is, you know, about doing exactly what we've been talking about. It's exploring, it's being open to, to, to ways that are uh, more helpful mm-hmm. to people who have these experiences. I also come from a point of, of peer support, so mm-hmm. I'm a big advocate for 
um, peer work and um, and really that's walking alongside somebody on, on their journey um, and just being present and um, uh, normalising, accepting and, um, yeah, but letting the person uh, drive the journey, I guess, and just sort of yeah. going along for the ride. Yeah, you know, like you're, you're a busy woman and, and, you know, hear really inspirational stories. That Amanda McGregor that I spoke to, um, David Simmons that I had my first um, podcast episode with, now yourself, right? You guys do these wonderful things. I think you guys contribute so much to society using your kind of lived experience. It's something to be really, I think, um, I think something that the community should really be grateful for. So thank you so much for um, for the work that you do. And just before we kind of we sign off today, um, someone's hearing voices for the first time. They're scared. They're upset. Where to? Where to for them? What are your thoughts? Yeah, my thoughts are um, be careful. <laughs> I think it's um, it's a scary thing and you've got to um, reach out. You've got to, you know, get some support. But just, just I guess, um, don't rush off to, to the emergency or, or anything like that. I think find a trusted person. And talk, you know, talk with them about uh, your experiences. I guess I'd say to people that, you know, you are always stronger than your voices. No matter what they say to you or what they make you believe, you'll always be stronger than your voices. And and I think it's it's remembering that, um, remembering that uh, nobody can take your power away from you. Um, and I think you've got to it's it's. You've got to be strong. You've really got to be strong, and um, and start with somebody that you trust, um, and talk to them about about the experiences. I think that uh, the Hearing Voices Network um, is always a good place to to call. Um, go along to a Hearing Voices group. Uh, talk to other voice hearers, um, and uh, and the other thing I would say is educate yourself like you know google's a wonderful thing isn't it yeah. joe uh, it, it sure then, is yeah, yeah. you can find you know google the hearing voices <laughs> network there's lots of information um yeah. out there um but i think you know go, going directly to the hearing voices movement um reading the stories uh learning from other people's lived experience mm -hmm. if you're into youtube's there's lots of YouTubes also out there. Yeah, um, like this one. Like this one. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's that would be yeah, a good a good start. A anyway. good start. Amanda, yeah. thank you so much for having a chat with me. It's been an informative and a very enlightening kind of discussion. Thank you so much, and also thank you for the bowl of cheesels. I completely didn't have time to read today <laughs> or the last kind of episode. Uh, I, I wish you well in your in your future um, endeavors. And um, we will kind of put your information as well as the, the hearing voices and information in the show notes, and maybe even flash on the stream. But other than that, thank you so much for today. Thank it's you, been Joe. Awesome. <laughs>